today is the second day of this week, number four. So in this case, we are um, on the middle of the second week. We are going to uh, continue with the topic that we were developing. In this case, we are going to continue with the other four elements that we are going to see um, that are related to the topic. Um, that is the present continuous. We are going to talk about the present continuous. And we are going to see the other elements that we were like talking about yesterday. And in this case, it is important that we can uh, focus on these elements or in these parts. Um, we are going to see the other four uses, but three of them are based on the present and one of these is based on the future. And we are going to continue seeing different things related to the family uh, because we were like uh, talking about that part. And in this case, we are going to see uh, different elements or different ideas that involves our family. So we're going to continue with that. Um, we can say that uh, that idea, that main idea, that is the, uh, the family, because um, yesterday we were talking about the family. And now we are going to continue with that part. So. It is not like we are going to talk about the members of the family or we are going to create a vocabulary related to the members of the family. In this case, we are going to talk about the things that they are doing. Because we are using the present continuous, we are going to um, follow that information and we are going to use the structure to talk about the activities that the members of our family um, perform during the day. So in this case, we are going to listen also a conversation in which we are talking about the family. So we are going to continue focusing on our family, but in this case, it's the same thing with the, we can say like, uh, with the same idea and also following the structure. But we are going to wait a little bit for the others to begin with this um with this topic so we are going to wait like a minute yes just one minute more Okay, uh, we're going to begin with the uh, second part of the topic. Um, we were talking about the present continuous tense, and we were talking about that this information, we are going to use it like a question. In this case, it is based on a specific question. Um, in this case, we are going to continue answering that question because the question said, when should I use the present continuous tense? So in this case, we just have one. One use for the present continuous. Now we are going to see the other four um, like uses that three of them are based on the present 
And one of them is based on the future because you know that we can use this kind of um, information, this kind of structures to talk about the future. But we are going to see how this information is used when we are going to talk about the future. What are the elements that we need to follow um, in this case when we need to talk about the future? Because when we are like um, talking about future, we are thinking about situations that are going to happen in a couple of years, in a couple of months, maybe in, I don't know, in a very far time or very far moment. But in this case, we are going to see what are the elements that we are going to use to um, have this specific structure. You know that uh, when we are talking about the future, we are going to use the structure going to, not just the will, would, um, all of the things. We are going to use going to. And that one is in a continuous, the, the verb is in a continuous form. So that's why. Okay, now we are going to see the document that we have here. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have an issue. Now, this is the first use that we were seeing yesterday in this case. Uh, we have that we are going to use this tense for things that are happening at the moment of Good evening, speaking. Good evening. Good evening. So in this case, we are going to use this structure when we are talking. Uh, we are uh, talking about um an activity that are happening in the same moment in which we are talking. So in this case, we have the examples like I am working at the moment, I am drinking water, I am eating um a donut, I am listening a song, I am talking with my friends. Um, she is watching a movie. Um, different things that we are doing at the time. Now, we are going to see what are the number two. So in this case, the number two said that we are going to use the present continuous for other kinds of temporary situations, even if the action isn't happening at this moment. Vamos a utilizar también esa estructura cuando eh, tengamos otras situaciones, verdad, de tiempo, en este caso de diferentes tiempos, Incluso si la acción no está pasando en ese momento. So we're going to see. Give me a moment. Okay, like this.
Okay. So in this case, we have the example. I um, just want to say that uh, right now is a start raining. So if we have some troubles with the connection or in um, some moments or I don't know, um, if something happens, you know that is because it is raining. But I think that to, right now is kind of, it's not like very um, heavy, kind of. So I think that we are going to end this session. Okay, but I don't know. So we have the following example in this one set. John, uh, I mean, John's working in a bar. Until he finds a job. In his field. Okay, we have this example. John's working in a bar until he finds a job in his field. Remember that this use, it's when something is temporary. Cuando algo es temporal. Cuando algo no va a durar tanto tiempo y que incluso no estamos hablando de algo que está sucediendo en este preciso momento, sino que es una situación del presente en general pero del que nosotros eh, consideramos que es una situación que no va a durar mucho tiempo. En ese caso, también vamos a utilizar el ING, or in this case, the continuous. So that's why we have the example. John's working in a bar until he finds a job in his field. John está trabajando en un bar hasta que él encuentre un trabajo en su campo, en su ámbito, ¿verdad? De la, de la manera en la que, o de la forma en la que él, pues, debería estar trabajando. And in this case, he might, I mean, I don't want this one. He might not be working now. Maybe he, it is not necessary that he is working in this precise moment. Uh, maybe he's too young uh, or he's just graduated from the university and he's working because you know that it is necessary that we have a job and we can do different things to gain money. But uh, sometimes um, it is not like we are going to begin working in the same thing that we are like studying. But we have this kind of... Uh, uh, activities to gain money. Así que vemos en este ejemplo, ¿verdad? Que tal vez no era necesario que John estuviera trabajando porque quizás se acaba de graduar de la universidad o tal vez no se ha graduado aún y eh, trabaja para poder obtener uh, ingresos, ¿no? Um, pero no es como que algo tan necesario, pero está sucediendo y es algo temporal porque lo más seguro es que él vaya a cambiar de trabajo cuando tenga una mejor oportunidad. Next one. I'm reading a really great book. I'm reading a really great book. So in this case, I am reading this book right now. No, I am not doing. Uh, I am just explaining. I am just telling you that I'm reading this great book. It's like when we have a conversation with someone, we can say like, ah, just I just want to say that I am like reading something very interesting. And we can say, oh, what is the book that you are reading? And you can say, oh, I am reading different kind of books. But in this case, it's like 
something that I am not doing in this precise moment because I am talking with you. And I just want to say that uh, in some cases, I just have the experience or the situation in which I am just like explaining this one. Maybe, let me see if I can um, have one of my books because I have my books here. Mm, let me see. Which one, which one, which one? Oh, this one. I am telling you that I am reading The Phaeton of the Opera. This one. El Fantasma de la Opera. And I just uh, trying to explain you that I am reading this book and I find this book really interesting. But we are having a conversation. We are just um, talking about the things that we are doing during the day. And maybe I have a um, free time and I am just like um, spending that time reading this book. So I am explaining to you that I am doing this activity, but it is not necessary that I am doing it in the same moment I am talking. Esa es la diferencia con el punto uno y el punto dos, que el uno es cuando estamos nosotros hablando, es donde está sucediendo esa situación. Y en el punto número dos, no está sucediendo en el mismo momento en el que yo estoy hablando. Yo simplemente estoy explicando de que quizás estoy haciendo esta actividad eh, en este tiempo, ¿verdad? General, pero no justamente en el momento en el que yo estoy hablando. Quizás yo voy a trabajar y en mi tiempo libre me leo un capítulo de este libro, The Phaeton of the Opera, or another book because I was reading The Lord of the Rings, eh, the book number one, but I didn't have enough time to complete the reading. But that's why we have this example. Next one, number three. She is staying with her friends for a week. She is staying with her friends for a week. So, she is staying in a place. Ella se está quedando en, en, en casa de su, uh, de su amiga, ¿verdad? Y se está quedando por una semana. So, in that case, it's not this precise moment in which we are talking. But we are talking about this moment. This whole week in which we are right now. So, if you can see something or you can, uh, like... Think about the present simple. We have kind of similar situations in which we can use these expressions. And we have like, in simple present, we are going to use these situations as something permanent. Es algo permanente. En presente simple hablamos de situaciones permanentes, pero en presente continuo, pues ya vemos que hablamos de situaciones que no van a durar mucho tiempo y que son temporales. Now, we're going to see the number three. And, um, I don't know if you can uh, hear the sound. I, I'm not sure. But um, right now, it's raining really, really hard. So, it's almost, it's very difficult, I can say. It's very difficult to listen in clearly for me because in my place it's raining so hard um, and I barely uh, hear my voice. So it's kind of weird. So number three, we can use the present continuous for temporary or new habits. For normal habits that continue for a long time, we use the present simple. We often use these expressions like these days or at the moment. Vamos a hablar de hábitos nuevos o hábitos temporales. En el caso de que sean hábitos que van a durar mucho tiempo, vamos a utilizar el presente simple. En este caso solo tienen que ser hábitos que van a quedarse con nosotros un periodo de tiempo nada más.
for this one, we have the following examples. It says, he's eating a lot these days. He's eating a lot these days. Maybe this is just something that it's not going to happen um, a lot of time because maybe this person is having troubles Maybe this person is very stressed or this person has anxiety. So in this case, this um, person is like eating a lot and maybe it's going to change in, in a couple of days or in a month or something like that. She is swimming every morning. She is swimming every morning and this one she like she didn't use to do these things because um now it's like um healthy habit that she is having because she is practicing in a sport so this one is very good for the health and for the mind and for different things And now this one is bad because it's something that can have bad things with our health, but it is talking about the habits. And this one is, you are smoking too much. Now we are going to see the number four. Another present continuous use is for habits that are not regular, but that happen very often. In this case, we usually use an adverb like always, forever, and constantly. Often, we use the present continuous in this way to talk about an annoying habit. Estos son para hábitos, pero no son lo mismo que el número tres. En este caso, en el número cuatro, es para hábitos que no son tan regulares, o sea, que no pasan tan seguido, que no pasan todos los días, pero que sí tienen como eh, una duración o que sí han llegado a pasar quizás más seguido, ¿verdad? Y también utilizamos adverbs en este, en este, en este uso y... Utilizamos el presente continuo para hablar acerca de hábitos que nos molestan. Son cosas que nosotros hacemos, pero que quizás al mismo tiempo a nosotros nos da como un poco de, de molestia. Y eh, puede ser tanto de nosotros como de otras personas.
So we are going to see the examples. In this case, we are going to see some habits that maybe we have, or uh, we are talking about some um something that that people are doing that are like um we are not feeling good about this this situation. And the first one said, "You are forever losing your keys." You are forever losing your keys. Siempre estás perdiendo tus llaves. That is something annoying. She's constantly missing the train. She's constantly missing the train. And the last one, Lucy's always smiling. And the last one that is uh, used for the future is that we are going to use this structure for arrangements, um, something that is very sure that it's going to happen. Um, and in this case, we already made a plan and we are pretty sure that this event is going to happen. Esto es cuando ya estamos seguros de que esta situación se va a llevar a cabo, que ya hemos hecho quizás una cita o un plan para poder eh, realizar esta acción y que nosotros pues estamos seguros de que va a llegar a suceder. Ya cuando suceden cosas muy fuera de nuestro alcance, pues ya es otra cosa, pero que nosotros ya hemos hecho lo posible porque se lleve a cabo esta situación. And we have the example for this last one. We have number one, I'm meeting my father tomorrow. I'm meeting my father tomorrow. We're going to the beach at, on the weekend. I mean, we're going to the beach at the weekend. And last one, I'm leaving at three. Like this. So in this case, we have just this short review about the uses of the, um, the present continuous in which we are like specifying the uses that we can give to this structure. And in which cases we can like have this specific structure or the things that we can say or the things that we can do using this ing form of the verb. But we are going to talk about this one or we are going to focus on this part. We 
We are going to talk about annoying habits. So you are going to um, tell me what are some different annoying habits that people have. So in this case, we are going to divide this one here. Vamos a hablar de los hábitos molestos que tienen las personas o algo que a nuestro parecer es un hábito que, que pues es molesto, ¿no? Que es algo que nos desagrada o que no nos gusta. Y vamos a hacer una pequeña lista de annoying habits. And then we are going to try to write or to say some eh, sentences using these annoying habits. Vamos a tratar de eh, pensar en un hábito molesto, en un hábito que tienen las personas que quizás es un poco que no nos gusta, no nos parece. Y vamos a tratar de ponerlo en una oración para hacer un listado completo. Así que ustedes van a pensar en un hábito que a ustedes no les gusta o algo que no les gusta que las personas hagan, o incluso puede ser de ustedes mismos, escribir una frase así como lo tenemos ahí, you are forever losing your keys, she's constantly missing the train, Lucy's always smiling, um, she is always angry, or she is like always fighting with her husband, or um, the kids are screaming, Um, in the afternoon, I don't know, different things. Y vamos a hacer una oración, ¿verdad? Por ese hábito para hacer nuestro listado de annoying habits using the eh, present continuous. Tiene que ser con, eh, presente continuo, que es el tema que estamos tratando en ese momento. So, we are going to have five minutes to think about an annoying habit that people have and we are going to have enough time to create our sentence. So we are going to have five minutes and then we are going to write our sentence on the chat and I'm going to write your ideas on the document. So let's go.
Okay, I have some sentences here. So we are going to begin writing them because they are very interesting. So we are going to begin like this. First one, he's always getting up late. He's always getting up late. My boss is yelling in the office. My cats are always asking for food. People are speaking loudly in church. There are people that who oh. mm. people who interrupt you when you are talking. Mm. Um, so we are going to change, oh, but you use talking. She's always beating her nails. She's always using the cell phone. She's always using the cell phone. Mm. But in this one, these are watching at a movie. Mm. We are going to add something. People who is watching a movie and are not paying attention. Okay, there are a lot of uh, bad habits that people has or that maybe in some cases we uh, also have. And we can use this structure to explain those situations and what are the different things that maybe we are not like very happy to leave like in these cases people that is uh, getting up late and they know that they have some things to do during the day and maybe there are like we can say like these people is being late to the different places to they are like going the people who is yelling um the people who is speaking loud in specific places, 
Um, people that talk with their mouth full, that is something very bad. People who interrupt someone when he or she is talking. Um, people that is biting his, her nails or his nails or their nails. Uh, someone that is always using the cell phone, even when they have a conversation with other people. People who are watching a movie and they are not paying attention and they are talking, they are like doing different things. Um, you are always screaming. Okay. Or maybe when you are talking to someone and that person is not paying attention to you, that is very annoying. And there are a lot of people that is doing something like that because they are watching or, or seeing different things or they are paying attention to the other, uh, to other things or to other, uh, I don't know, situations that are happening in that precise moment. So we have different examples here. So bad habits that people have. And we are using that bad habits with the present continuous. Now, we are going to listen a conversation and then we are going to talk about different things or different activities that the members of our family are doing. So let's go to the platform. And we are going to listen to that conversation. The conversation is called, I come from a big family. Hello, do you come from a big family? Listen to me, Lee and Marcus talk about their family. I come from a big family. How many brothers and sisters do you have, Meili? Actually, I'm an only child. Really? Yeah. Most families in China have only one child nowadays. I didn't know that. What about you, Marcos? I come from a big family. I have three brothers and two sisters. Wow. Is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller these days. But big families are great because you get lots of birthday presents. How many brothers and sisters do Meili and Marcos have? Type your answers on a discussion box. Hello, do you come from a big family? Listen to Meili and Marcos talk about their family. I come from a big family. Okay, this is a conversation. I don't know if you are from small or big families, but in my case, I am from a very um, a small family. I know that my parents has like um, different members of the family. They have a very um, a really big family, but in my case, my like my family, like the 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 people that is around me, um, is very small. They are like a couple of uh, people, because in my case, I am depending on my father, my mother, my brother, and my sister, and I have a, a couple of aunties and a couple of cousins. Because I, I don't have that kind of relationship with the other members of the family. And they um just like talk with my parents, but we are not like a very big family. And my guess is kind of uh, is small, but we're going to see some elements in this conversation. We have Marcus that is asking a question. How many brothers and sisters do you have, Amelie? He's asking the number of brothers and sisters that this girl has. And she said, actually, I am an only child. Really? 
Yeah, most families in China have only one child nowadays. Remember that this situation happens in China because they have this a law that this rule that the families just can have one child. But um nowadays is I think that is kind of different because uh you can choose if you want to have another child. But when we are talking about the tradition, that is the most like a representative thing that we can remember about China that they just can have one child. So in this case, she is talking about that situation. Um, I didn't know that, uh, Marcos said. What about you, Marcos? I come from a big family. I have three brothers and two sisters. So in this case, we can think that they are six people, six brothers and sisters. Wow, is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller these days, but big families are great because you get lots you get lots of birthday present. And we know that in our countries, it's kind of um, normal that people has like um, two or three, four or five kids. And in other countries, it's like they have like 10 kids or something like that. Um, but nowadays, it's completely different. You know that uh, people is not like wanting to have... Uh, children right now because the situation is kind of difficult and you need to work a lot to have money to have your kids because you know that it's kind of complicated to have um, kids with um, this situation and you need to have a kind of money to to buy medicines to to buy clothes to buy uh, different things that the kids um, need so in this case, we are like seeing uh, families that have one or two children, or maybe they are not having kids, or maybe they are just thinking about, I don't know, have just pets. So in this case, we are not going to see like a very big family from younger people. You know that this one is for older people that have like eight to 10 kids, but Right now, it is not like very common here in our country, but in another country, it's like kind of the same thing. So we have this a uh, conversation that is related to the big families or smaller families, and in this case, we have that the the contract, the, the different things between the situation uh, from Marcus and May Lee because he is like very, oh, for, for he is very common to have a lot of people in the house. But for May Lee, it's not like that because she is the only child of the family. Tenemos como el contraste más grande o la diferencia más grande entre estas dos personas es que uno de ellos ya está acostumbrado, a verdad, que haya muchas personas en casa porque pues son muchos hijos y eh, hay mucho ruido, hay muchas personas, hay... Eh, niños, ¿verdad? Hermanos, hermanas corriendo por todos lados y eh, el caso de ella es pues totalmente diferente, es lo contrario pues es hija única, es la única niña en casa, entonces no hay como ese caos, ¿verdad? Que pueden crear los hermanos en una familia grande So, basically they are eh, talking about this kind of things. Now let me see um We're going to have a, um, a table in this case that is talking about um, typical families. Vamos a hablar de las familias típicas. But for this, I need to stop this one because I need to show you this image because I'm going to use this as an image. But we are going to say something related to the families in other countries. But also we are going to think about the situation in our country. So we are going to make like a comparison between these situations, these things um, from other countries and for our country. But give me a second, I'm looking for the image.
Okay, let me see. I have this image and I'm going to do it on the document. Okay, in this case, we are talking about typical families. If you can see in one of these spaces, we have different numbers. And in the other, it's not like uh, complete, but we are going to focus just in facts about the United States. Vamos a enfocarnos en la parte de los Estados Unidos. So we are going to make like a comparison between the United States and our country. So we have three different things. In the home, the working family and marriage. Vamos a hablar del, uh, del hogar, ¿verdad? De las casas, de la familia trabajadora y también del matrimonio. In this case, in the first part, we have in the home. And it says 41% of the homes have three or more televisions. 63% of families almost always eat dinner together. Tenemos dos cosas aquí. La primera, 41% de las casas tiene tres o más televisores. Mm. Eh, 63% de las familias casi siempre cenan juntas. Next one, the working family. 55% of the mothers with young children work. Um, 78% of high school students have jobs. 55% de las madres con hijos jóvenes o hijos pequeños trabajan. Y el 78% de estudiantes de bachillerato, podemos decirlo, ¿verdad? Tienen trabajos. That is a very big difference between United States and in our country, because in our cases, it's kind of impossible that people that is in high school are having a, a job because you know that they are like minors. So in United States, it's completely different because they have like the permissions. They have something very specific for that this situation here is kind of complicated. We can have a job when we are like a teenager, um, if maybe we have a, a member of our family that has a store or a specific place. Pero es bien complicado que obtengamos su trabajo acá siendo adolescentes. Eh, tal vez lo podemos hacer mm, en tiendas de personas conocidas, de familiares o en algún lugar donde pues haya un familiar nuestro, ¿verdad? Que podamos eh, tener un, un trabajo mínimo, porque tampoco es un trabajo muy eh, formal, muy fuerte, porque tampoco hay como tantas prestaciones, ¿verdad? Siendo menores de edad. Now, in marriage, 74% of adults between the age of 18 and 35 marry. 27% of adults between the age of 18 and 34 live with their parents. El 74% de los adultos entre las edades de 18 y 35 están casados. Y el 27% de los adultos entre la edad de 18 a 34 vive aún con sus padres. Tomorrow we are going to see the second part of this, um, of this table. So we are going to make like it, the comparison between our country and the United States. Now, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the session number three of this last week. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.